Uh, my name is Judy Lamini. I'm the founder of Mbegani Group, uh, which has uh, operations in different sectors of the economy and investments in different sectors of the economy. Uh, the other cap I wear is that uh, I'm a philanthropist because I believe that in an, a society like South Africa, which is the most unequal country in the world, each one of us that has something has to give back, whether it's your skills, whether it's your time or money. Uh, so I subscribe to that. The other thing that uh, enters my titles is being an author. And uh, that happened uh, by accident uh, because I came across uh, these amazing leaders. Uh, for my first book, it was a conversion of my thesis, uh, and I named the book Equal But Different. It showcases different women leaders, uh, the challenges they faced, and there's so much to learn from their life journeys. And it's not just South African women leaders, it's uh, also international leaders. And uh, two men are included in the book uh, for their belief in uh, the empowerment of women. And uh, the reason why they are there is to just uh, uh, showcase what a, a man who supports women is and why they do it. And the objective is that other men emulate them. The second title, is actually a fire, fireside chat uh, with African achievers, and the book is called The Other Story. And why The Other Story? Because as Africans, we hear so many things about what we know, who we know, where we fail. We don't hear enough of the other story, where we succeed, where we achieve, where we make a difference in people's lives. So the people that I cover in The Other Story are African achievers who actually have done well in their personal capacity, have done well in supporting their families, but have gone beyond and made a difference in the communities that they come from. Because together, we are stronger if we support each other. A fearless leader is a leader who is not without fear, but has less fear. She's authentic. Uh, it's important to be authentic because uh, people have to know what they are dealing with and uh, it's easier to trust someone that is authentic. Um, a fearless leader has the humility uh, to own up to her mistakes. Uh, she takes difficult decisions. Uh, she actually consults, but when it comes to decision time, she takes the decisions. And being authentic is still within a context. So she's adaptable. She adapts to the context that she finds herself in. I've led in different scenarios because of the many hats that I wear. Uh, as a chairman of a board in a transforming South Africa, uh, there are certain issues that you have to grapple with and uh, they tend not to be comfortable issues and you need to be fearless when you deal with them because unless you deal with them, no one else is going to and everyone else follows the leader when it comes to tough questions and tough uh, conversations. Uh, one of those is ensuring that we become the South Africa that people died for, which is transformed both in terms of race and gender especially. And uh, when you tackle those difficult uh, conversations, uh, it's important that respect is the driver. You challenge respectfully, uh, because once the respect loses, uh, actually leaves uh, the boardroom, then there's a problem and you can't achieve much. What's important as a fearless leader in situations like that is that you are driven by the bigger picture and you are driven by mutual respect and not being liked because I promise you uh, some of these difficult conversations mean that you are going to have people that are not going to like you, which is fine, but as long as they respect you. I've led a small uh, startup uh, where, as research shows, failure rate is high, so there are certain things you have to do in a certain way but it's important that the people that you lead are part of the team. They are committed uh, to the organization uh, as opposed to just being scared of the leader. So as a fearless leader, you need to remove fear from your, the people that you lead 
you need to make make sure that they are committed to the cause and the way to do that is that you take them on board in a way that protects them but also makes them uh, see the vulnerable side of you as a person and uh, making sure that they know what's happening in the business uh, while you protect them from some of the difficult uh, uh, decisions that you have to make and the dis difficult position that the company may be in. When you're playing a role, you know, and you assume that role and become what you think people need, it's not sustainable, right? The only thing that's sustainable is authenticity, self-respect, and respect for others on the one side. On the other side, it's very important to know for the employees that it's okay to fail. What's important though is adhering to the value system of the organization. Understanding what the value system is, adhering to the value system, but give them a chance to think on their feet. And if they fail, but abiding by the value system of the company, let it be. And ask them to learn when things don't go well, whether it's your decision or their decision that you've empowered them to make, it's important to then have a post-mortem to say, guys, we didn't do well. What do you think was the cause for us to fail? It's very important because then it allows people to have an introspection. It allows people to think for themselves because one of the things we talk about is we need diversity. But diversity for the sake of it doesn't help anyone. The culture in the organization has to be inclusive because if the culture is inclusive, everyone is allowed to be who they are and do things the way that makes sense to them within the parameters of what is respected in the organization, led by the culture of the organization and the value system. So I think it's very important that everyone knows this is what I'm here to do. I'm accepted the way I am. I don't have to assimilate to a culture that's foreign to my culture, but within the premise of the culture of the organization and the value system of the organization. Um, what I've learned is that when you vulnerable, people understand where you're coming from. One of the things that I always do, no matter where I am, whether I'm a CEO, where, whether I'm a chairman, is to make sure that in every meeting, each and every person has a voice. Because when people have a voice, they get committed to the cause, they get committed to the vision. If they don't understand something, give them the opportunity to ask, give them the opportunity to have their say. And it's important that even if you don't agree with what they say, take it on board and explain why it's not going to work and allow them to counter. It's so important that when you say, I don't think it will work because of the following, then you allow them to say, push back, what do you think? The other thing that I've learned, which I always say to my employees, is that when there is a problem, don't come and say, I have a problem. Come and say, I have a problem. These are the solutions that I think are going to work. What do you think? Because already I want to know that you are thinking, you know, and then it's easier to understand the thinking mechanism on your side for me to be able to add to that. And collectively, we can come with a solution. I think it's very important to know that no one knows it all. And leaders do make mistakes. They do take bad decisions. But leaders have to take the decisions. That's why you're there.